Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton in from the Flourish Academy where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to experiment with the background blur inside of Photoshop. But first, please check out our sponsor, ymcamera.com for all of your photography need. Their prices are comparable and they ship even faster than Prime. And if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your photographer friends. It helps us to produce more content. And if Photoshop feels overwhelming to you, trust me, I understand. Why don't you head over to flourish.academy slash Photoshop to check out all of our resources. Inside of Photoshop, if we go to filter and then neuro filters, I just want to say that Adobe released the background blur a couple of versions ago, but I never did a tutorial on it because I found it completely unusable. <laughs> First of all, it was processing on the cloud, so it was extremely slow. And even then, it didn't do a really good job. But recently, with the Photoshop 2022 update, Adobe significantly improved this filter, so I thought we should take a look at it. Now, when we say neuro filters, what we're talking about here really is Adobe's machine learning via Adobe Sensei. So it's supposed to be <laughs> air quote smart. Okay, so if we scroll down on the left and we turn the depth blur on, it will take a moment, but you can see that it is processing on device rather than on the cloud. And it feels a little slow right now, but I've got to tell you, it's I've timed it. It's twice as fast as it used to be. This isn't a filter I would want to use on every photo or an entire session. This particular photo was taken, taken excuse me, by my good friend, Nicole Begley, and she was using this to demonstrate off-camera flash. So she shot this at F9, which means that the background is largely in focus until we run the background blur. And if we click the preview button in the bottom left, you can see the before and after. And I'll tell you what I noticed immediately compared to past versions. I'm just going to click that off and on, but I want you to pay attention to this tiny little baby pine tree in the foreground. It was smart enough to recognize that that shouldn't be in focus. So it blurred it just a little bit, which I can appreciate. Let's take a look at a few of these sliders. If you take the focal distance from 25, let's say all the way up, I just want to show you what happens to the image. It did the exact opposite of what we were hoping for. For, for some reason, it gets confused about what the subject is. Now, you can click focus subject and that actually does help, but the reality is, I probably would recommend keeping the focal distance down pretty low, maybe in the 20 to 25 range. Let's take a look at the blur strength. It does exactly what you think it would do. If you increase the blur strength, it is going to blur the background, and in this case, part of the foreground even more. And you can see that made a pretty significant difference, especially if you turn on and off the preview button, it starts to look really fake at this point. So I wouldn't recommend that you do that. Also, I just wanna make a note here that it's taking many seconds as I experiment with these sliders and I'm just cutting out those delays in the tutorial. So don't expect your machine to work quickly with this filter. It, again, it's way better than it was, but it, it's still fairly slow. And the reason I, I wanna make note of that is because if you find settings that work for you in general, then I, I wouldn't mess with them. I would experiment on a couple of images, find the settings that work for you, and then just leave them alone. So I'm going to take this back down. And I also wanna make a note, I'm running 32 gigabytes of RAM on this 27 inch iMac from 2015. It should run a little faster than it does, but I'm trying to be patient. Okay, so we just turn that down and we can look at the before and after. And I think that that looks pretty good. The haze, if you bring the haze up, you're almost adding like a fog to the image. It starts to lower the contrast on the image and it does so on the area that was blurred. So you'll see that the subject does not contain that haze. And I don't, I don't know, for the most part, this is a creative effect that just doesn't really do anything for me. So I'm gonna take it back down to zero. 
Also, you'll notice that Adobe has classified this particular neuro fi neural <laughs> filter as beta, which means they're still experimenting and there could be issues. When I output this, I like to choose new layer with a mask so I can see exactly what's going on with this image. So let's do that. And this is helpful because again, we can turn on and off the visibility icon. However, if you press Alt or Option on your keyboard and click the layer mask, you can see exactly what's happening. Wherever you see white on this mask, that's where that filter is applied. Where you see black, it is not applied in that area. Now I find it really interesting that there's this gray on our subject, which means that filter is somewhat being applied there. Now what you could do, is press B on your keyboard to grab your brush tool. Make sure that your brush is set to black. And then you could make this brush bigger, the right bracket key, and you could just brush over your subject to make sure that that filter is not impacting your subject. You're essentially hiding it. Alt or Option, click the layer mask thumbnail. Let's look at the before and after. I think that looks pretty good. Let's take a quick look at another image, this time containing people. I photographed this image of my friends. I don't like the background. No, I don't like the trees coming out of their heads or behind them. I shot it at f5.6, which means the background is a little more in focus than I would like. I want to show you a quick trick here. If I go to filter and I just select neural, neural filters and or use that keyboard shortcut, it will apply the last settings that I used. That's pretty convenient because that saves me a step of having to open up the dialog box. So I'm trying to remember, did everything we use in the previous image, would it apply to this one? I think so. So let's go ahead and just click that and let the filter run again without opening the dialog box. Oh dear, well, that did not work well. Let's hold down alter option. No, our subjects are clearly blurry. Okay, that did not work on this image. Let's delete that layer and go to filter and go to the filters so that we can open up the dialog box and wait patiently. We'll select the depth blur. And when I look at this before and after, I think that is just way too strong for this image. Again, it starts to look fake. So I'm gonna turn the blur strength way down. That looks much better. Let's output this to a new layer masked and say, okay. And now we can look at the before and after. We can hold down Alt or Option. Photoshop did a great job at masking out our subjects. We can see that the filter is not being applied to them, but just to the background. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.